Screen Directors Playhouse. Bringing you each week an outstanding original screenplay. Chosen and directed by one of the country's foremost motion picture directors. Tonight our director is John Ford, the only man ever to win four Academy Awards for direction. Mr. Ford has selected a fascinating story about the baseball world entitled Rookie of the Year. The starring role is played by one of Hollywood's best-known stars, John Wayne, in his first dramatic role on television, and introduces his son, Pat Wayne. From your profound interest in that ticker, I take it that something earth-shattering is coming over? Mr. Cully, it's the starting pitches for the World Series. <laughs> Tell Mike Cronin I want to see him, right now. Yes, sir. Mike, Mr. Cronin. Hey, quit reading over my shoulder. Bad manner. What is it? A novel? Cowboys and Indians? No. You can call it a passport, a ticket from here to there. Maybe a stay of execution. But whatever you call it, it's manna from heaven. Gee, the old iron lungs with the sea. Well, right you'll away. have to wait. Hello, Betty. That call to New York. New York? Well, keep trying, will you? What time is it? Is it that late? Well, you better put that call through person to person. To Ed Schaefer in the press box of the Yankee Stadium. Yes, the press box. Ed Shaver with a globe. Okay, honey. The press box at the Yankee Stadium on the opening day of the series. Wow, would I like to be there now? Well, kid, maybe I can fix it for you. Not today or tomorrow, but maybe the third or fourth day. Are you kidding? You think I'd kid about a sacred thing like that? Haven't we been working together, man and boy, for five months now? No. A time like this, I'd say... Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, this is Mike. Ed, you know what you said about me getting a job on the Globe? Bringing in a story? A big story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, and I meant it, too. But, Mike, this is no place to... Well, I got it. The biggest sports yarn since David K.O.'d Goliath. Mike, the game is starting. Let me call you back between innings or sometime. Where? What's that? No, no, at my hotel. The Grand View. Grand View. Emeryville, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's right. Huh? The first pitch was a strike. What do you mean, strike? That pitch was a mile wide. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye, Ed. Roland, your day off is Sunday, not Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Well, I wired you. I had some time coming. I took it. I decide when a member of my staff takes time off, I'm docking you two days' pay. Miss Prescott tells me you've been calling long distance, New York, $12.50. You'll get it. I intend to. And one more thing. No. No one more anything. I've been taking it here for ten years. Stuck. Trapped. I've got just three words for you, Mr. Cully. Drop dead. Funny, I'd never even seen the kid play till three days ago, my Sunday off. I drove into New York to see Ed Schaefer and wound up in the press box of the Yankee Stadium. And there he was. Man, what I tell you? What did I tell you? Baseball five slider, all the same. Bang! Kid can really handle himself. Oh, and what a nice boy, too. Phil, more coffee. Not like most of these morning glories. 
coffee yet. Hey, how'd you like to come down to the clubhouse after the game? Maybe you can pick up a story. On my day off, any time I work for Cully, he pays for it. Why do you stick on that Hick Town paper, the East Burlap Bugle? Mike, you're too good a man. You got a job for me? Listen, you bring me in a story, something I can show to the boss here. I can't tell him how good you are. That's the idea. Bring in a good story. We can use them. Well, what do you expect me to dig out of Emeryville, Pennsylvania? The love life of the girls' softball team? Oh, <laughs> writes jokes, too. It was just another ball game. The Yanks had sewn up the pennant two days before. But I couldn't take my eyes off that kid, Lynn Goodhue. I couldn't get over the feeling I'd seen him before. And then he came to bat in the sixth. Strike three! Shoot, isn't he? Yeah. Evil looks good when he strikes out. Hey! Wait a minute. Then I knew why that kid looked so familiar. He was Buck Garrison all over again. Buck Garrison, probably the greatest natural ball player, except the babe, in the history of the game. He ran like Garrison, hit like Garrison, and when he struck out, he did what Garrison never failed to do. That little trick of reversing his bat and bouncing the handle on the home plate. It was crazy. It couldn't be. Someone besides me must have spotted the same thing. Had to. You don't forget a player like Buck Garrison. And you don't forget the Black Sox. And you don't forget that news kid who waited outside the clubhouse with tears running down his face to choke out Buck. It ain't true, is it? Oh, Mike. Lynn, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Mike Croner. How do you do, Mr. Croner? He's with the East Burlap Bugle, so be nice to him. The Emeryville Post-Gazette, but it's just as bad. I just wanted to say hello and congratulate you. But I wouldn't have picked you for Rookie of the Year. Is that so? You're out of the rookie class, kid. You're a regular on any man's team. Well, I hope I can live up to the uniform. It's what I've been hoping for all my life. Oh, Case, can I see you a minute? I see it. You never played in the minors, Lynn. I played with him, not in him. What? You see, that's my one and only joke. You see, Coal Town's a coal mining town. Oh. I played on the home team, that's why I said that. I see. Coal Town, that's in, uh... West Virginia, sir. Oh, you don't have to call me sir. Makes me feel like Methuselah. Or back in the army, I don't know which is worse. I'm sorry, you're not so old. I mean, for a man your age, you look okay. Well, thanks, Lynn. Who taught you to play ball? Gosh, I don't know. I just picked it up, I guess. I've been playing ball as long as I can remember. Pop says I practically cut my teeth on a baseball. Pop, huh? You ever play ball, your father? Nah, he never even reads the sports pages. Oh, he'd get out with us and hit flies and stuff. Working in the mines, he never had much time. Well, I guess you'll want to get to your shower. I just wanted to say good luck on the series. Thanks. I still can't believe it somehow, me playing in the series. I keep thinking I'm gonna wake up and find I've been dreaming. You're awake, all right. Lynn, does the uh, name Garrison mean anything to you? Garrison? No, except there was a famous jockey. And oh yeah, the ball player. Buck Garrison. Yeah, I read about it. The Black Sox scandal with the gamblers. They threw him out of baseball, didn't they? That's right. It was a long time ago. Well, Ready, Mike? Oh, collecting autographs, huh? <laughs> Go on. Sure. Don't be bashful. Sign it for him. Go ahead. Do you really mean it? Sure, sure. He'd be showing this all over East Bugle. Here, yours, my friend. You know, it's the first time any newspaper man ever asked me for my autograph. I don't write so clear, but... Here, and thank you very much, Mr. Cronin. Let's get out of here. Sure, sure. Well, kid, don't read my column tomorrow. I don't want you to get a swelled head. Hear me? Okay. And thanks, Mr. Schaefer. Come on, the bar's closed at 2 in the morning. Yeah, if they'd have known what was in the back of my mind, they'd have torn me limb from limb. But if Lynn Goodhue was Buck Garrison's son, 
Boy, I had me a story. Hello. Yeah, it's me. Put him on. Come on in, Shorty. It's the blue suit there on the bed. I want you to have it. Hello, Ed. Are you ready? Well, all right, brother. Brace yourself against that phone. This is the greatest story. There isn't going to be any story. I want to talk to you. Well, I'd listen a lot better if you'd put that thing away. Is that it ring? Okay. Okay, but sooner or later, somebody's gonna wonder why I don't answer it. I drove all night to get here because I had to tell you... You're but... tired. Why don't you sit down? Well, go ahead. I'm what you'd call a captive audience. Oh, how can a man be so evil? <laughs> How can you honestly be so evil? I'm a newspaper man. I don't make the facts, just report them. What do you know about facts? You lied the whole time you were in Cold Town. You lied to me and you lied to Mr. White at the Sentinel. What'd you have to come to Cold Town for? I'm here to do a story on Lynn Goodyear. Lynn Goodyear? Yeah, sort of a special feature. Well, now, you couldn't have come to a better source. We're mighty proud of that boy here in Coal Town. Mighty proud. Well, you have reason to be. What about his background, his folks? Well, now, as I always said, the world's been a poorer place since Mary Lynn died. Mary Lynn? Uh, that was his mother. Lynn was a maiden name. Oh. Welsh, I reckon. She taught school. Always had a way with kids. She helped start the milk fund and the day nursery. When Lynn was born, she was so happy, it made you feel real good just to look at her. And then, in no time, she was dead. Hot. That's the last thing should have killed Mary Lynn. Hot. She must have been a fine woman. What about his father? Oh, Larry? Oh, Larry is a good man. Quiet, temperate in his ways. Foreman in the mines. Keeps to himself most always. Well, have you ever heard of Mr. Goodyear once having played ball? Larry? <laughs> mm. You mean, uh, you mean the way he fools around with the kids? Oh, shucks. I used to see him on a Saturday or a Sunday in McKinley Park. Big, slow, clumsy fella. Now, Lynn didn't get where he is by studying Larry Goodyear. No, sir. Oh, you mean, like Topsy, he just growed into a big leaguer? He sure did. Oh, I could go on for days about Lynn and what a fine boy he is. Had a paper route. Good in his classes. Never took advantage of his size. Yes, sir. He's a real credit to his mother, that boy. Well, it seems to me his father rates some credit. Say, that's right. You raised him. I never thought of it that way. Well, you know how it is. You never pay much attention to what's right under your nose. It's been pleasant meeting you, Mr. Cronin. And don't forget about putting us back on that exchange list, huh? Will do. And, uh, thank you very much. Bye. Nice fella. Nice fella. Yes, sir? A nice fella. Hello. You looking for somebody? Uh, yeah. I was looking for Larry Goodhue. He lives there, doesn't he? Oh, well, yes, but he doesn't get home this early. Oh, well, it's 6 o'clock. I thought the day shift at the mine closed at 4. Well, it does. He usually likes to come home by way of McKinley Park. It was oh, here. I see, and there's always a bunch of kids playing baseball. Oh, I guess you know him. Well, not exactly. I saw Lynn Sunday, though. You did? Well, how is he? Uh, did he know you were coming here? Oh, all these silly questions. You don't even know me. I'm Ruth Dahlberg. I live here. I guess you probably guessed that. I guess I sound pretty crazy. No, you sound like a girl in love. And what's wrong with that? I'm Mike Cronin. 
How do you do, Mr. Cronin? And I am in love with Lynn. Uh, you want a donut? They're fresh. Thank you. And so you're the girl next door. Did Lynn tell you about it? Oh, I could write a book about the pair of you. How you grew up together, fought all the time, made faces. And then suddenly one spring night you discovered each other. Uh, last winter and we were oh. having a snow fight. <laughs> How is he? He's fine. Fine. Look, uh, I am anxious to see Larry. How far is McKinley Park? Well, I tell you what, you wait a minute and I'll take you over there. You can tell me about Lynn on the way. Fine. It was getting better and better. This one even had love interest. Bobby, that's better. But I struck out. Oh, I know you missed it, but your swing is better. You're not just chopping at the ball. Here, let me show you once more. Now. You keep your elbows out, see? All right. See what I mean? Hello, Buck. Your boy gave me this Sunday. He's good, Buck. But he'll never be as good as you were. I swear you're wrong, mister. He's better right now than I ever was. I'd like to quote you saying that. Newspaper man, huh? No newspaper man ever did me any good. Before or after the trouble. It's our job to print the news. I didn't say it wasn't. What are you two talking about? What is it, Dad? Oh, it had to come out sooner or later. Well, it's a great story, Buck. Only one question. Does the kid know? No, what? Will somebody please tell me what you're talking about? No, he don't. You better go write your story, mister. Go ahead, print it. You don't think I'd beg now, do you? I gotta print it, Buck. Sure, who wouldn't? Probably be a great break for you. The one I've been waiting for. For a long time. Well, I'm glad somebody gets some good out of it. to rake up past history and use it against a boy who's never done a dirty thing in his whole life. Lynn's just getting started. He's got everything ahead of him. There's not a thing. Not one thing in that story against the kid. No. Only that his father was kicked out of baseball for life because he was once weak enough to take a bribe. You're too young to realize how close the Black Sox scandal came to killing a great game. But that's over and done with. It's forgotten now. If you're so concerned about baseball, why bring it up after all these years? I'd never even heard of the Black Sox or Buck Garrison until Dad told me about it that day after you came to Coaltown. Mr. Cronin, you know the rule about having dames in your room? Get out. What about your blue suit? Later. Well, they don't close till 6 o'clock. I said later. Listen, Buck put his finger on it himself. It was bound to happen. If not me, somebody else. That kid's is... Father all over again. Yes, except for one thing. Lynn's never hurt anybody in his whole life, and he's never done anything to be ashamed of. He loves his father, and he loves baseball. If you print that story, you'll kill everything he loves. Maybe you think Buck Garrison hasn't been punished enough. Why do you think I took this gun out of his bureau drawer before I left the house? because I was afraid he might remember where he'd had it. You say he almost killed baseball. Well, you think back. Think of those little boys in McKinley Park. Did he almost kill baseball for them, Mr. Cronin?
Hello. Put him on. Hello, Ed. Mike! Well, was that a game or was that a game? What do you mean, how did it come out? We don't even know the score. Listen, don't they even have radio down there in East Burlap? I won't even mention television. On the likely probability, you never even heard of it. But with the score all knotted up in the tent, and one out, Goodyear comes to bat. And with two and two on the kid, he hits the longest ball I've ever seen in my life. It was still climbing when it went over the stands. And it probably hasn't come down yet. How do you like that? You won the game, huh? Oh, that's fine. Must have been a beaut. Listen, Ed. Now, what's this about you having a big story for me? No story, Ed. Oh, I thought I had a good one on the uh, Rookie of the Year. But no dice. Quiet down, gang, will you please? Mike, did you say you had an angle on Lynn Goodhue? Oh, you silly jughead, you. Mike, that angle wouldn't be that he was really Buck Garrison's boy, would it now? Mike, pal, you need a change. I didn't know you could get jungle fever in the sticks, but brother. Of course, we all know it. Anybody that print a story like that and tell that kid that... I got him, the patsy. The one for that assignment you've been trying to push off onto me. But if that person is so stupid... He ain't stupid. He's smart. He's got a war record a mile wide. Mike Pally, are you still with me? Yeah, I'm here. Or what's left of me. If you want to go to Japan without a pack on your back and branches sticking out of your helmet, get on up here. You've got an assignment. Huh? The, a tour? A tour of the Orient, the All-Stars, after the series? Well, what are you waiting for? Get the lid out and get... They do have trains in these burlap, don't they? How do you like that guy? Who's for the match game? You better go home and tell Buck... Larry Good, you. Not to worry anymore. <laughs> or, or maybe you better phone him. Shorty! Shorty! Mr. Cully, you've just been hit by the llamas, home run. 